Hello, this is Dr. Kirk. Today we're going to make a firework, basically just a sky burst firework. And in here we'll start with the create. Move over to the particles. Particle systems, because that's all it's going to be is a particle source. So click on that. And just click and drag to make it. I can hit the G to get rid of the grid because I really don't like it very much. I'll expand it out. And here we have it. Now, let's zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on. If I hit play, it just shoots out a bunch of particles. Let's take a closer look and see what's going on here. I can do the particle view here, or hit 5 on my keyboard. Here it is. I'll actually move this over so we can see it while it's going on. Drag this down a little, and get the best view we can here. All right. So here's the creator, the particle flow source, PF is particle flow. And here are the events, birth, position, and so on. If I check out birth, it starts at zero, as you can see, and emits the particles through frame 30. 200 of them. I can increase the amount if I want to. Let's try about 500. So a lot more come out. Now, I'm going to change this. Let's say I want to emit it around 25. Start though, very, very close, about 23. So it bursts, boom, more instead of just flows. The flow is great for snowfall or for rain, not for fireworks. So we've got the boom, it just all drops at once. I have to change this a bit more. The position icon is where it starts. I'll change this location, this is great for snow or something, to one particular point that's going to be the pivot point. So all of a sudden, boom, all of these particles drop from the same place. And in this case, we've got 500 particles dropping straight down. Now the speed is how long, how fast it goes. It starts out at 300, so fairly fast, all along the arrow pointing downward. We'll change that to random 3D. Here's what happens. Now you've got a firework burst. I'll zoom out a little bit. So now you've got the firework burst. The speed is interesting because it's just the originating speed of it. So it bursts out and then kind of slows down. Rotation we don't need to worry about. Shape and display we'll get to later. Right now it's in ticks, so you can see that. We'll get to the rendering of it later. So we have this firework blowing up. We need to do a few things on this. It looks very, very symmetrical. As a matter of fact, it looks perfect. When it blows up, too perfect. It's exactly round. Now you see how it kind of stops at 100. I'm going to change that for a minute. I'm going to open up. Oops, let's open up this right here, the time configuration. I'll make that out to about 140, 150, something around there. It's just so I can see everything. So when I play it, I want you to get the idea that it just stays there. Nothing really happens to it. Well, it's a nice big burst. And if it goes nice and smooth like that, it looks like it's pretty far away. But the bursts do fade out. It's right now, it's all fading at once when the time frame stops. They live forever. That's not good. We have to have them actually die out. For that, we use delete over here. Drag a delete in, and suddenly everything vanishes, but don't panic, it just vanishes all particles. We can change this to by particle age. So it's going to vanish as a 60 frame lifespan, and then starts to vanish out. The variation is 10, which means plus or minus from the 60, so it's 50 to 70 is the lifespan. Let's change this a bit. The variation will bring that way up, about to 30 or so. Lifespan will drop that down to about 40. So it blows up and starts to kind of crinkle out like that. Maybe about 35. I can reseed it, which will vary the ones that fade out and the ones that don't. Vary the lifespan of each particle until I get a configuration that I like. And that looks alright. I think I'll have that live a little bit longer. So it started about 50. Nice and big and start to fade out like that. Change the variation to about 40, because so I want it to flicker out over time, see what it looks like. All this is just fine-tuning, that's no big deal, you can do this on your own, of course. Alright, now, let's change a little bit more here. We need a gravity, because right now, it's going out perfectly, and it's not fading and falling down like it would in real life. So we'll add a gravity. Gravity is a force. So go into force and drag that up and in. So we've added a force. Right now it says none, because there aren't any. Go back to the beginning, because you always like to add things, usually, in frame zero. And I'll add a gravity. It's going to be a 
force over here, space warps. I'm going to gravity right here. I'll click on it. I just click and drag. It doesn't matter how big you make it, it doesn't increase the strength when you make it like that. But there it is, defaults by one, strength of one in normal gravity. Let's take a look on this PF source. And I'll just kind of grab that. And I'll hit play and it should fall pretty quick. Boom. Once we connect it. So into the force, I'm going to connect it to gravity. Now this is kind of fun. I'll do it by list. And I'll list all the forces. I'll select the gravity and select it. There could be other forces here that you might not want. So in this case, we've got the gravity. Now this is going to hit hard, so... There we go. It doesn't really look like a firework, does it? It's just falling down very, very fast. Absolutely terrible. Just it would kill everyone beneath it. Not good. So we have to change that. And then you can change the force of gravity, the... Well, the influence of gravity right here. Two different ways to change gravity, actually. Um, if you go to this right here, let's go back a bit. I'll hit the escape key and grab something else. So let's go to the gravity here and modify. And I can modify that strength. Right now it's set for default one, which is your standard gravity. I don't want to modify this right now because that would affect everything gravity's related to and linked to. But I'll do it over here by the influence. So I'll do it over here by the influence, set for a thousand percent. I'll just have influence about 50. So that should be much, much less. Let's see what happens now. So it explodes. That's not even enough, is it? Let's set it up for about 250. Let's see what happens. Oh, far too much. So it's all a game of kind of setting it, I'll guess, 80. That's not too bad. All right, so here we have it. It explodes, and it starts to fade. It starts to go down. Speed, we want to vary that, because right now it still looks too round. So speed will vary that, bring that up quite a bit. There we go. So it flickers out and explodes, not quite the same all the way through it. And it looks much more organic now, much more like a real firework. So I'll do it about like that. that. Looks pretty good. You can always change it and vary it by hitting the new, and it calculates a new burst like that. See, it'll do it again, and calculates a new burst. Don't really like that one. It's kind of heavy in that base there. Let's change that. Yeah. Do it one more time. But just do it to whatever looks good. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now we have the firework that is exploding, and it looks great. We haven't set up the rendering of it yet, but that will come later. Right now I have a good base firework, and we can work with this in later tutorials. So, make your fireworks. Have fun.